guys, Paul here from Melbourne Performance Coaching and the Complete Personal Trainer Podcast. It's been a pretty good week so far. A bunch of students signing up from all over Australia, which is really, really cool. Different states, every single one. Uh, so really nice to see that yeah, people are listening and uh, getting some value out of it. So I want to continue the sequence we got. We also deal with students overseas as well. So if you're overseas, don't feel like you can't reach out. Um, today, we're going to keep on continuing down the communication path. So we've talked about the fixer narrative in the past, so a couple of days ago, about how we shouldn't be cultivating an attitude of fixing our clients. The next uh, communication strategy that I see a lot of trainers using and a lot of really problem, it causes a lot of problems, it's not really a useful solution, is trying to prove how smart they are all the time when communicating with their clients. Like the fact that they need to impress their client is indicative of the results they're gonna get. And that's not really the case. So I see a lot of personal trainers going on about the amount of books they read or they own, uh, amount of courses they may have enrolled in, uh, all the cool stuff that they're learning and focusing on, but none of that really matters unless you understand change psychology and how to communicate uh, people to create readiness to change. So. If you know every single step of the Krebs cycle inside an hour and you understand periodization to the nth degree, but you can't actually get a client to implement any of your strategies, it's not really going to help them. Likewise, conversely, if the client isn't involved in deciding any of these strategies, particularly the ones that are more nutrition and lifestyle orientated, your ability to get your client's results effectively becomes a net zero. In fact, the, the more advanced uh, material that you regurgitate to your clients and the more you try and show off the further and further back you're going to push that client away from actually doing something anytime we have it we overcomplicate something that's quite simple right? fitness and you know changing body composition get healthier is a simple process it's walk more sleep more exercise regularly eat a healthy diet that's basically and manage stress, minimize and manage stress. That's the essence of what we do. And a lot of coaches go down a rabbit hole of how complex we can make this, that the client's respiratory patterns are out, or that they've, they're not internally rotating or externally rotating enough as they go through the phases of gait, or they can't find their midfoot, or you know they haven't optimized uh, nutrient uptake for thyroid function. All these types of things, uh, they can be valid. In a lot of cases, they are. But for a lot of the general population things, they're not the lowest hanging fruit. So when we communicate in this way to show off our new skills, our new vocabulary, our verbiage, our vernacular, all this kind of stuff where we're trying to impress our clients, we don't want to impress them, we want to impress onto them how to make a change. So it's a very, very different way to go about it. So when I talk to clients now, I keep my language and the words I use very, very simple and speak to them on their level. I'm now spending most of my time, 90% listening and asking questions rather than telling people what to do. So this is a really good test to see if you are actually working with your clients and coaching them or if you're just lecturing at them. If you spend most of the time talking in the session with the client about a particular nutrition, lifestyle, or stress thing, you are no longer coaching that person, you are lecturing at that person, and you're doing it more to impress you than to impress changes upon them. Very, very important distinction to make. So what do I recommend trainers do? Keep learning the hard stuff. Keep learning the cool stuff. It's really important. Uh, the more technically skilled we can get, the better we can get at our jobs, uh, the more people we can help, the more problems we can recognize. For these complex issues though, learn simple ways to apply them and to communicate the value of them and the strategies to your clients. Involve your clients in the decision-making process. So don't worry about these really complex things that you may be interested in. Always think about the lowest hanging fruit that is, about, uh, that is there for your clients to grab and to make a meaningful and tangible change in their health and body composition. Don't worry about going down functional medicine routes and all that kind of stuff when most people aren't hitting the regular physical activity guidelines, hydration guidelines, and vegetable intake guidelines. If you hit that stuff first and then you see the other stuff there, that's when you can start to address that stuff. But make sure you address the client in a way that they understand, that helps them feel involved, doesn't make them feel that they're being lectured to, 
and involves them in the decision making process. So guys, that's it for community, or not it for communication, but that's it for today on communication, where we don't worry about impressing our clients. Instead, we want to look, look at helping them make change in their lifestyle by talking to them with change psychology. We will talk more about this in the next podcast. Thanks heaps. Leave a review, uh, comments, anything like that. All appreciated. Thanks heaps, guys, and I'll speak soon.